Hey guys, it's Caleb with White Metal Games. We have another tutorial for you today. Um, we are oftentimes asked to make what we call scrapyard basing. This is an example of one such base. Scrapyard basing is when we are requested to add a lot of detritus, or as we like to say, bric-a-brac to braces, uh, to bases. Uh, sometimes this is meant to emulate a battlefield scenario where you've got lots of scrap and leftover, maybe ruined vehicles or destroyed vehicles, uh, discarded weapons, that sort of thing. Uh, this could also be applied to just about anything, whether it be skulls or uh, jungle debris, like fallen branches and logs. So while this is a general tutorial that's going to apply to a battlefield scenario, this could really be used for just about anything. So. Just to show you this finished example here, this is a Redemptor Dreadnought base we're working on for a Raven Guard project. And on this base, we've used all sorts of spares, including some leftover barrels, uh, also some discarded weapons. And then we've got this piece from a, uh, this bulwark, sort of a, a defensive position um, from a hero base in the Warhammer 40K range. So for this video, we're gonna show you how to go about making one of these. Uh, we have a repulsor base here and the client has requested we mount their newly pounded repulsor tank to it. So you can see here, we've got this Raven Guard repulsor. This video is not gonna focus on this model, but I just wanted to show you the model we're gonna be focusing on for the video. The most important thing about this tutorial is gonna be that we make sure that the base, the basic material doesn't uh, touch the model. We don't wanna scratch it or damage it or anything like that. So one of the limitations of this project is we need to make sure the basic material doesn't go above this uh, recessed area right here. Uh, so we want to make sure we keep the basic material fairly flat. Now where we would usually use a pallet cam, we've uh, arranged a bunch of different stuff. We call this bric-a-brac. The basic idea with bric-a-brac is that you can use it um, for uh, basic material. Uh, so this is just leftovers from other projects. These aren't particularly interesting bits in and of themselves, but they work perfectly fine as leftovers. So you can see here we've got some leftovers from City of Death. In fact, I'll bring it over to our main viewing area. So you can see we've got some leftovers here from some City of Death projects, little bits from leftover toys, action figures, that kind of thing. None of this is particularly identifiable, but all of it has identifiable characteristics. So for example, on this one right here, this looks like it was from a model car. Looks like we probably warped it or destroyed it for an orc project. And this would work perfectly fine for something like this. There is some problems, as you can already see there, where this piece is a little high. So this might work better for something that a, a larger, wider base, uh, like maybe a knight base or something like that. If I wanted to make it work on a project like this, simply cut it down, grab as many parts as you possibly can from it, just like that. So for today's tutorial, I'm just gonna sort of take parts like this and arrange them on the base, and I'm gonna show you how to blend them in. Okay, so to start with, we're gonna begin by gluing some parts to the base. Again, remembering to try to keep it as flat as possible to avoid touching the repulsor itself. We're gonna be using some super glue from the Magnet Baron. This is their Instacure medium gap filling glue. You could use something thicker or thinner here, depending on your preference, and any super glue will do. So to begin with, we're just gonna glue down some random pieces of this. Because this stuff is kind of irregular, you're gonna find that you're not gonna always get an easy clean contact point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of arrange these in different places. The most important part of this is to get the pieces to be generally identifiable as scrap, but not necessarily specific to anything. So for example, if I used, let's say a fantasy bit, I don't want it to look like a fantasy bit at the conclusion of the project. I want it to look like um, it's just a bit of debris on the battlefield. I'm going to spread my parts around just like this. Now remember that these are all going to be painted at the end of this. So it's not important what color they are or even really what material they are. Um, in practice, we use brick a brick material from just about everything we have left over. You can see I've got a lot of spare glue left over on the base and that's totally okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my palette over here and I'm gonna grab some other small parts. I've got a pretty good amount of big parts on here, so I'm gonna grab some smaller bits if I can. So for example, here is a leftover paper clip from something. We're gonna take this and just cut it up into some smaller pieces. Kind of arrange those on the base. It's okay if these stick up a little bit too. Um, you could use this with just about anything. Over here you see we've got leftover wire from something, probably an LED project. Uh, this is a nice little piece of something small, not really important what it came from. Okay, so once you've got that built up enough that you're feeling satisfied with it, 
and I think just a couple more parts here and I'll feel pretty good about it. What you're going to do is you're going to give this some time to dry. If you have any sort of accelerant, you could spray it on the base at this point. And then just give that a little while to dry. Once these are fully solvent and locked in place, then we're going to add on a basic material. This is called uh, Earth Texture by Vallejo. This is an acrylic texture. Uh, basically, this is a great basic material. One of the nice things about it is that it already comes pre-pigmented, so it's colored. In this particular case, it's kind of a brown color, so it would work really well for mud. Now, we're going to paint this, but if you like this color, you could certainly use this as is. Uh, paint the base first and then apply this as a finishing touch and that would work perfectly fine. Because we want this to gel with our overall models in this particular collection, we're going to go ahead and apply this first, prime it as we would any other surface and then paint it afterwards. So we're going to let this dry and then we'll come back right after that's all dry and apply our texture medium. All right guys, I've given my glue a few minutes to dry and I've actually used an accelerator for this. Uh, accelerators are available on our website at whitemetalgames.com slash store and you can find that plus super glue and all the other hobby needs you might have. So now we're going to apply our texture medium. Um, so for this all I'm going to do is just use a popsicle stick or stirrer or whatever sort of disposable thing you have for this that you like. In the past I've also used plastic spoon, spoons for this. You can see the medium is pretty thick and chalky but it dries really fast. So my goal with this is to get it down into these areas to create a ballast material. I don't want to cover up any extra details if I don't have to, so I want it to feel like this is integrated into the base without actually necessarily obscuring detail. So I like to start from the inside and work my way out. This does get a little messy, um, so be prepared for that. a second stick in this particular case to kind of get some of this medium down onto it. So as you start to work up around these outer edges, you just sort of want to build it up to the edge, kind of like that. If you make a mistake, um, then you can use your fingers to sort of wipe it away. I'm just going to kind of build this up like a muddy texture. So I'll take a second there. I can see that I've got a little bit there on the base of the uh, flyer edge. So I'm just going to use a Q-tip to wipe that away. And then once that's dirty, I'm also going to use the same Q-tip to kind of spread this around a little bit. Again, not trying to obscure major details, just trying to fill in the gaps. So just like that. So I'm going to go around and do this to, to the entire base. Uh, rather than make you watch it, we're just going to use the magic of time lapse. And you'll see how this looks when it's all applied. All right, guys, as you can see here, I have applied my texture medium to the entire base. Um, so it's been evenly applied and spread across. I've still got plenty of details showing on this guy. So for example, these bits of metal, I can paint like metal or scrap from a ship or something like that. I've tried to smooth out the texture as much as possible to sort of hide anything. So to me right now, this just looks like a, a wasteland of old mud, probably from vehicles and boots and all that sort of stuff. If for whatever reason uh, you don't like this texture and you want to mix it up a little bit, um, you can use your favorite ballast medium. Over here to the side, we actually have some charcoal uh, left over from a filter project. So I'm going to take a little bit of this and sort of sprinkle it on top. Whenever we do this, we like to call it battle spice. We're just adding a little extra texture and detail. Now, because this basing medium is currently wet, this will basically glue on just like sand. So you could use anything for this. You could use sand, you could use dirt, you could use soil, dry tea. Uh, just about anything. And by just sprinkling on a little bit of it, I'm going to create um, a, a surface texture. The more of this I apply, uh, the more it will stick to it. And obviously this is great if you want to dry brush later in the project, you can do that. Uh, but I'm not going to overdo it because I actually like the surface texture. So, and there you have it. Um, so once this is fully dry, we will then prime it and paint it as normal. 
And at the conclusion of the project, we will show you what the finished result looks like. If you like videos like this or more things like this, be sure to check us out online at whitemetalgames.com slash video. There you can see all of our new subscription services. We have a new premium video service called The Miner. It gives you access to all of our premium content each and every month. We produce three to five videos each week. A lot of these videos are include things like painting tutorials, assembly tutorials, kit bashing and sculpting, uh, as well as how to frequently asked question, letters from our fans, and that sort of thing. We're always looking for new content, and if you're interested in expressing that content with us, be sure to contact us at info at whitemetalgames.com. Let us know what kind of videos you're interested in. We have lots of ways to support us, including Patreon and Podbean, among others. You'll find some of those in the descriptions in the video link below. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, and until next time, put your minis where your mouth is. Oh.